It's Flashback Friday on the Affiliate Guy podcast. Today, we're looking back on Jeff Walker's Product Launch Formula Live event in 2017 with lessons that are still huge today. Welcome to the Affiliate Guy podcast. If you want to grow your income, serve your tribe, and enjoy all the benefits of affiliate marketing and having your own affiliates, you're in the right place. Thanks for joining me today. Let's get started. Hey, what's up? It's Matt here, and I want to share something awesome with you. We're, taking a, we're going to do a little time travel today. We're going to go back to all the way back to spring of 2017, <laughs> and we're going to, I'm going to share with you a recap that I did with Mark Sievercrop on my team of Jeff Walker's Product Launch Formula Live. And I wanted to share this today because I was thinking about uh, the other day uh, I had a, a meeting with the team and we just, the, I don't, I won't go into the details, but this conversation led down this path that reminded me of PLF live last year. And some of these lessons that we learned, some of these huge takeaways that we got from this live event that we're still applying today, because I think it's important you know, when you go to a live event, it's real easy to leave there and be really excited on this, on this high and have all these great ideas. And, you know, you create like a 10 page plan and then you never execute. We took every single one of these takeaways that I'm going to share with you in this, in this lesson today. There's a little bit of background noise. You know, we did this live uh, just outside the, the actual event, like in the, you walk out the doors of the event and turn left and like 20 feet down, that's where we're doing it. So there's a little bit of background noise. We're, we have applied every single one of these lessons. Every single one of these lessons has been worth tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars to our business. So we're getting results as a result of PLF Live. And we're really excited about that. So I wanted to share these lessons with you. And if you're interested in Jeff Walker's PLF, his product launch formula, I cannot stress enough how much uh, it changed our lives, you know, in our business. Just go to mattmcwilliams.com forward slash PLF. It's not even open yet, but you can get put on the waiting list. mattmcwilliams.com forward slash PLF. And we'll make sure to tell you when that's available. But let's do a little time travel and go all the way back to spring of 2017. Hey, it's Matt here with Mark Sievercrop. And we are live from PLF Live. And wanted to shoot this quick video while it's fresh on our minds. Want to share some of our biggest takeaways. You know, we're on this, like Jeff talks about, we're on this high right now. And I think it's important for posterity and, uh, and for us, quite frankly, to share these takeaways with you guys. Because I think when we share these, um, not only is it a record for me to kind of look back, for Mark to look back, for... Um, but it also, you know, you guys learn from it, but yeah, it's, it's kind of a, I feel like it holds us accountable to say, okay, here are our biggest takeaways. And then honestly, what are we doing with those? You know, like I can share these big takeaways and say, well, these are such good quotes and, you know, I really learned all this cool stuff. And then six months later, I've done nothing with them. And I know I'm guilty of doing that. I know you might be guilty of doing that as well, but I wanted to share some of these takeaways, uh, before we come down, before we get on a plane and deal with TSA and uh, go through all that rigmarole and uh yeah so mark first of all i mean like just overall what do you think of plf live well first off i thought your paper here said veterinarian but it says key takeaways so that's a little different how do um, you get over how do you get veterinarian from key takeaways a not a k anyways overall um it was really good i you know we were just uh i feel like i'm name dropping it was like we were just talking to john walker about how totally different than any other conference like we ended dancing like that's what we were doing and so like and that was one of the things that i really liked was the fact that that jeff was big on the way you feel physically changes the way that you interact and the way that you listen and i you know we feel that it's like after lunch after about 45 minutes it was like and so we'd be jumping up and down and dancing and clapping and that made a huge difference in how much i was able to learn and so i think that was one of the big things that yeah. As far as an overall thing, maybe not something I learned, but um, that made a big difference for me during this. Yeah, I know for me, um, there's a quote here from Mastin Kip. He says, the energy you bring to your body is the energy you bring to your business and your life. And uh, I know that was kind of a call to me to remember that, like, I think it's one thing to say I'm successful in business or, or whatnot. And then 
as the menu asking us to get on the Sheraton Wi-Fi pops up. Um, and I think it's one thing to say, like, I'm successful in business and you're not taking care of your health. But it's another thing to say, wait a minute, my health, my energy, and my body is directly correlated to my business. And I think we know that. I just don't know that we put that into practice. Like, I'm guilty of that. And I am the thing I'm most likely to skip in a day when I've got copy to write or a, a crisis with the business is my workout. It's eating right. You know, I'm going to stuff my face with leftover pizza rather than find a better alternative that takes an extra 10 or 15 minutes. And I think that's important. The energy you bring to your body is the energy you bring to your business and your health. Um, I know, again, you know, the question of just like overall, overall, it was awesome. Again, it's, um, it's, it's lifting. It's good for the soul. This is not just a business conference. Um, it's good for, it, I think it's just good to surround yourself with people. You know, that's another one of my business. The big takeaways I wrote down here was, um, I was going to save this for the end, but it, uh, you know, segues can't pass up a good segue, right? It's the importance of meeting in real life. You know, I'm in a, in a mastermind group with uh, Mike Kim and, and Brian Dixon, among others. And uh, it was just so, like, we talk on video all the time, but everything just went to a whole new level meeting in person. I've met with Mike. I've met with uh, Jonathan Milligan in person, who's also in our mastermind. But I've, I feel like now Brian and I's relationship is, is at a different level. And, and so is the relationship with a lot of other people. Well, I mean, you, when, you, when you share Cold Stone Creamery with somebody... That, that really ups the game. So, and that's one of the things we yeah. did. But that was one of my big takeaway was the, was the connections. And I, I didn't put it in that that idea of meeting in real life, but that was huge. I mean, being able to, to stand and talk with some of these people that I've interacted. I mean, a lot of these people, we'd emailed. Like, we've emailed them tons of times. Yeah, dozens. But sitting down to dinner and having dinner with, with Brian and Mike and Navid was awesome. I mean, it, it was great to be able to just get to know them beyond business. And, um, you know, we talked a lot of, talked a lot of shop, I guess you'd call it. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it, it was fun to just hang out with them too and get to know them and, and develop that relationship. And I think it changes the way you email people. It changes the way you interact with them, the oh, way totally. you help them in business. So, I mean, that was my number one and number two takeaways was the connections you made. I mean, I learned a ton of great stuff from the conference, but by and, by and in large, the most important thing for me was the people that I met. Like not even, not even people that we're naming that we know who they are, not even the John Walkers and the people like that. But like, you know, these other guys that I met that we just sat down next to, asked them some questions, found out what they were doing and made some friendships, you know, people that, that will connect with again, maybe not helping in business, but that are good connections to have. You just made me think of something that I, I didn't write down, but like the power of, you know, we had, we had lunch yesterday with this guy named Chris Hunter. Yeah. Uh, won't go into details, but Chris is in an industry that I will never work in, probably. I have never even really been involved with. And yet talking with him about his struggles and like kind of looking at it from how can I help him yeah. actually solidified some of my own thinking. And, and, and uh, I mean, it's got, it's got the wheels turning. And again, it's because it's in a niche that's outside of mine. I noticed you wrote Avatar, and that was another one that I got. Um, we actually, uh, we meaning my wife, Tara, and I, um, missed that session, but I got enough out of it. And one of the things that I got, we have an avatar. His name is Pete. And one of the things that I really solidified this weekend was what Pete's true struggle is. Pete's true true struggle is that um, Pete has had a blog, uh, a podcast, a video channel, some sort of content producing mechanism for a year and a half. He wakes up at five in the morning every day, five, six days a week. He's producing this content and he's excited about it and yet what happens over time is the people around him that should be supporting him or maybe even want to support him. They're not seeing financial progress. They're seeing this as an expensive hobby. And so he begins to have those doubts and somewhere around the 18 month mark, Pete is thinking, you know, it's, it's, it's time to take action. It's time to make money or I need to stop doing this. I'm wasting my time. I'm sacrificing sleep. I'm sacrificing my health. I'm sacrificing family time. And he's ready to give up, even though he could be like on the precipice of greatness I did not understand his true struggle, and I also did not understand his true transformation. His true transformation for us is not has nothing to do with money; it's what the money does. You know, we've heard the old saying: "You're not people. You're not selling a, a shovel. You're selling a hole." We're not selling people on 
making money online. We're selling people on what that means to them. The the not the not even not just the freedom that we talk about. You know, online freedom, lifestyle, business. We're legitim. What is it? Legitimatizing is that the word? Legit. I keep. It doesn't sound right. Anytime I say, it. I've said it like ten times this week, and it never sounds right. They're they're we're legitimatizing Pete's business and allowing him to start making money and now he's not got an expensive hobby but a real business like understanding that this weekend was worth 10 times the the price of admission maybe 100 times quite frankly well now that you mentioned that it might be legitimizing Legitim- it might, it might not be legitimizing yeah it's legitimizing <laughs> legitimizing might be the word you're looking for but we all knew what you meant yeah but you know i had the same thing and i don't know what it was about when when jeff took us through that process and like you said you weren't there for that I mean, you and, and I and Terry had gone through that process when we went through PLF, that mm-hmm. avatar. But there was something about the way Jeff walked us through it that I did the same thing. You know, I was I was working on, you know, my personal stuff and, and I did this complete 180 about what my who my audience was and what they wanted. And I realized that has nothing to do with soccer. It's all about connecting with your child. It is, yeah. And I don't know why I didn't realize that before, but it was something about the process of, of asking these questions that Jeff had us ask ourselves and walking through it that helped everybody, I think, get to that point where it was like, wow. And it was a legitimate breakthrough. It was like, oh my goodness, this changes everything about how I how I talk to my audience. It changes everything about the, the content I'm creating. I mean, everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was huge for me. Um, and and I don't know how it happened. Like that's looking a, back- That's a big shift for you. Like yeah. it's not about soccer instruction. It's about it's time with your, yeah. your kid. Like that's why I want to practice soccer with our daughter, Araceli. It's not because I necessarily care whether or not she becomes some soccer superstar. Right. It's that she wants to go practice yeah, soccer because she associates, just like I grew up playing golf and, you know, my dad was a golf instructor. So I associate practicing golf with time with my dad. She associates practicing soccer with time with her dad. That's, yeah. dude, that's awesome. Um, I'll, I'll just go quickly here. Another one is I think I mentally solidified our four product offerings and you'll hear a lot more about those because I'm going to try to sell you some stuff. And uh, so you're going to hear about those. The other one I got from uh, Victoria. I do not remember her last name. I, uh, yeah, don't know. Um, it's something lamb. What is it? it well, Victoria. Uh, Victoria, that was awesome. Is it Delam? My wife is off screen. She's going to look up the, the name right now. It's not in there. He doesn't list the speakers. Rock the Room. Just look up Rock the Room. Yeah. What people remember. There we go. It's still just Victoria on there. It's on the bottom, I thought. This is the longest segment ever while we look up this name. But she said. (laughs) There it is, right there on the bottom. Great. Of course, I can't pronounce it. La Bomb. La Bomb. Yes. Yes. Um, Yeah, she said the import. All right. What people remember is not information, but the experience. Yeah. And, and I love that. Like, it, it's, it's my Angelou said something along the lines, you know, people won't remember what you taught them, but how you made them feel. They're not going to remember what you said, but how you made them feel. Remember that in all your communication, you're creating an experience with your audience. Uh, one more very practical takeaway that you guys are going to hear from, uh, hear about soon. We had dinner with Mike Kim, as I mentioned. Uh, the, the man who beat Jeff Walker in Ray Edwards' affiliate contest. Like, which was mentioned from stage. Which was mentioned from stage. Right by John Walker. And this is the part where I just say everything you just said. Yes. 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 Um, I feel like I should laugh now because you just laughed. No, but he's the man who beat Jeff Walker in a recent launch with a list of like one one hundredth the size. And he had a killer idea for PLC that is way too in-depth to get into this. So I want you to look. We're going to do a case study with him. Yeah, exactly. Uh, He and I talked about that. We're gonna go take a deep dive into his into his uh, PLC strategy with this launch. Like I'm telling you, we're talking four thousand people on his list versus Jeff Walker's list. Jeff Walker doesn't lose affiliate contests, and Mike beat him. And it was I mean, even if Mike hadn't have beat him, if he'd finished second, it was huge what he did. Right. And it's all because of this strategy. So we're gonna share that strategy with you in the coming weeks again with the Sheridan Wi-Fi popping up. I don't want your Wi-Fi, Sheridan. So just back off, will you? Um, any other any other takeaways, bud? I think my only other one was, uh, you know, throughout the whole thing, Jeff talked about this this um, difference between rim life and real life, hmm. and he, he told this story about being with a guide on the the Grand Canyon rafting, and talking to this guide, and the guide said, "Yeah, my wife used to come down with me, 
and now she she lives rim life. She stays up out of the canyon, and I live in real life. And, and throughout this the whole conference, he talked about this idea of that this is real life. And I think with with a lot of you, you know, as, as you're, you're building your business, as you're doing affiliate stuff, that's huge. Realizing that even though most people you talk to don't know what you do, mm. they don't understand it. It's like, oh, you're playing on the computer. That's what my grandpa says. I don't understand how you make money playing on the computer. And I tell him I'm not playing, and that's probably the first part of it. Minesweeper. Um, so that was one of the big things for me is just realizing that the difference between real life and, and rim life and understanding that, that if it's something that you love to do and if it's something that you're good at, then that's real life. If it's your dream, if it's your passion, that's real life. You know, mm -hmm. don't let other people take that away from you by what they define real life as. They're not living your real life. Your real life is very different than what theirs is, and that's okay. I feel like you're moving away from me. <laughs> no. I, I'm, I'm like, having a flashback like, to dinner last night. Sorry. <laughs> that's another story we'll have to tell another time. <laughs> I, I, I mean, but that was huge. I really like that. On that point, I am. Yeah, this this is real life, ladies and gentlemen. John Walker. Yeah, we're back the um, <laughs> <laughs> like the the this thing about real life and rim life, what it reminded me of, and it's like it's one of those things. It's like it's a lesson I learned ten years ago, and I forget every six months. That. Like, it feels like sometimes when we're in the online world or we're in the content creation industry, we're doing, you know, this online marketing thing, that that feels like this um, other life. And, and, and I, there's something Mark used to say when he worked a full-time job and then he had the side hustle. Like, it, that was not your side hustle. He would say, like, in the morning, I would be chatting with him sometimes and he, and he, would, he would, you know, he'd write a blog post and he'd say, now I got to go to my second job. Well, he, cause he knew like, his goal was for, for the, you know, this thing, this business is online stuff to be his real job one day and say, I got to go to my second job. Most people get it backwards. And I think that's the difference between real world. And real world is the people who are supporting you and you know, the people who are, were in that room. And that doesn't have to be just in that room. Like rim life is not out here. Um, look for those people to support you. Surround yourself with people su who support you and are cheering you on, and they're your biggest fans. And like, that's the real world. And then there's ev there's everything else. And just don't get those twisted. Like, don't get those backwards because um, that's ca that can be depressing. Like, I know what that's like. It can be depressing. I I've shared the story before, Mom. I love you, and you know this story, and you've authorized me to share this. But I will never forget the time my mom looked at me and just like when she said. Why are you working so late? This is when I was single. I was still living with her, starting my first online business. And I was like, she's like, why are you working? And I just said, because like, I want to be successful. Like, this is what it's going to take to be successful right now. And she just looked at me. She didn't mean this in a mean way. She was trying to get me to back off a little bit and take care of myself. But she said, well, it doesn't seem like you're very successful to me. That's rim life. And um, last thing I will share, this is, this is not a, like, this is not a theme of the event. It wasn't a lesson. It wasn't a, a module of the event. Nobody said this. This week, this weekend got me to think bigger. And I wrote down this. I want to help 100,000 people. I want to help 100,000 peeps who started their blog, started their podcast, started their YouTube channel. Uh, their wife, their husband, their in-laws think they're crazy. They're starting to think they're crazy. I want to help 100,000 people. There may not be 100,000 people right now who are in that position, but I want to help, help 100,000 people make their first couple bucks online because I know what happens when you make your first couple. It turns into 10, it turns into 100, it turns into whatever number it is. Um, I was like, okay, that I, I'm looking at that number on the sheet and I'm going, holy crap. There's a lot of people, but it just expanded my mind to to be able to think that big. So any last thoughts, bud? No, I think, you know, like you said, nobody said think bigger, but I think that was the, I think that's what happened for everybody that was here. And I think that's the neat thing about being in a position where you're around a lot of people that are living real life is you start to think bigger. You have people, and Jeff mentioned this, you have people that, that high five you when you say, I'm going to make $10,000 next month. You know, whereas in the real world, real world, what everybody else would call the real world, People, you say that and they look at you like, <laughs> that's so cute. That's, that's, yeah. that's cute. 
And I think, you know, like, that's kind of what I've seen with, with our NPNP group is that encouragement and that that support and i think even with the blog you know the comments on the blog and that's really when when you break it down like affiliate you know marketing that's what it's about is the relationships and that's what we try to do for our affiliates that's what we try to do for everybody that you know is on the the mail list is is support them and say yeah if you want to make money as an affiliate let's do it let's give you all the tools we can to do it and i think that that idea of finding people that you can be around that encourage you and help you to do that and help you to think bigger is huge and it, it just makes a big difference and and everything else we talked about doesn't doesn't matter if you can't believe it can happen. I'm going to sign off with this because I'm looking at my new friend, Tyler Bream, and Tyler wants to go to dinner. <laughs> He's like rubbing his stomach. And he has like, patiently <laughs> waited for 18 minutes for us to record this. More if you include us trying to figure out how to set all this up. Uh, one thing you just said reminded me, there was a guy, they sh- they played his, his pre-launch, one of his pre-launch videos up on the screen. And I'm going to self-admit here, like, don't think I'm a bad person. But as it was playing, I looked over at my wife, Tara, who's off screen here, and I just went, ouch. And something happened about halfway through. My mind shifted from, ouch, this is not high-quality pre-launch content. There's, like, blue glare on the bottom. He's looking in the wrong direction, and he's reading off a script. And something shifted, and I went, you know what? He's doing something that 99.9% of the people will never do. And when the when the video ended, the guy got like a standing ovation. Yeah. And that's, that's what I'm talking about. That's the real world. That's the people that you want to be. The people who give you a standing ovation, even when you go, oh my gosh, that's crap. We're our own worst critics. Like, I hate my sales videos. I hate every video I've ever shot. I hate this video right here. <laughs> Just kidding. This video is amazing because it had John I mean- Walker. Yeah, John yeah, Walker, yeah. Right. John Walker's backside. Yeah, um, with the like still frame because he's in the video for two seconds. He kind of half paused though back here. You didn't see it. He kind of half paused. Like, should I like completely like like photobomb yeah? Their... Should I photo bomb them? Video and then bomb he them? Didn't. I wish he would have. No, but really cool like that guy did it. This, you know? That guy did it, and it's like the guy. Uh, there was a guy in Michael Hyatt's launch that I interacted with, and I will never forget it. He didn't make a single sale, unfortunately. He had like thirty-seven opt-ins no sale and he emailed me afterwards he's like basically should I stop doing this should I quit and I was like no because you did it like congratulations you did it we have a, a, a lady you know who I'm talking about I'm not going to mention her name because I don't have permission to uh, in a recent launch doesn't even have a list she emailed her friends she made a sale $798 commission thank you very much and she's on a fixed income and like, and she, you know, she did it. Like, she did something. So, I'll leave you with that. When in doubt, do something. Take action. Done is better than perfect. Move fast and break things. Do we have any what other slogans? Can we can share? In, yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right. You are what you eat. Love you. Uh, you are awesome. Go make it a great day. Should we launch them? Yeah, yeah let's do it. All right. Launch. Thank you so much for listening today. Remember to check out all of our deep dives into affiliate marketing at theaffiliateguy.tv. And if you have a question, you can ask it at asktheaffiliateguy.com. Who knows, might end up being featured on this podcast.